When you Google the words, never forget, these are some of the images that come up. They recall the tragedy of 9-11. And I would rather they be there than not, but I want to look beyond the slogan, never forget, and ask, what do we remember? How do we remember? I think it's through stories. I want to tell you three stories. One about fish, one about a napkin, and another one about a birthday card. So first, uh, oh, I should tell you that the, these stories are connected by the restaurant Windows on the World, which was at the top of the World Trade Center and destroyed on 9-11, and which I wrote a book about. First, the fish. Gentleman to your right is Joe Baum. He was the greatest restaurateur in New York City in the 20th century. He created restaurants like The Four Seasons and La Fonda del Sol. And it was his job in 1970 to build this restaurant that was going to go to the top of the World Trade Center. It took six years, actually, uh, before the restaurant was going to open in April of 1976. And a couple months before that, Joe was working on the menu. And there was one dish he wanted to serve more than any other. It's called truite au bleu, or blue trout. It's an exquisite dish. It's a dish that um, everyone from Ernest Hemingway to James Beard has rhapsodized about. It's because it, the, it's very, it's a, the way you prepare it is very unique. It has to be totally fresh. It has to be the, f the fish has to be alive the day it's eaten. So what you do is you take the recently killed fish, you put it in a broth that has vinegar in it. And um, the combination is a chemical reaction between the vinegar and the, the slime that's on this recently killed fish that induces it to turn blue. So it's spectacular and it's strange and it's an, an immediate conversation starter. And it's a totally fresh fish, so it tastes delicious. It's served with butter, salt, lemon, potatoes. And Joe wanted to serve blue trout. He had served it at many of his other restaurants. But there was a problem. The fish was arriving in the restaurant, or in the kitchen, dead. And that couldn't, that would not do. So they blamed the guy that was taking it from down, from upstate New York. And, but it turned out it wasn't him, it, was, it wasn't him. So then they blamed the guys that were in the receiving bay downstairs. But it wasn't those guys either. So then they thought there was actually someone trying to, actually killing the fish on the elevator ride up. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the, 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 what they, they actually locked the stakes they were on the elevator because, you know, there was the 70s, there was a lot of crime and stakes were expensive. Anyway, so they suspected that maybe someone was killing them. Not the kids, though. So eventually, one of Joe's workers called the geniuses over at, at Cornell, the agricultural school there, and said, do you have a theory? What's going on with these fish? And they did have one. The fish, they thought, were getting air embolisms, like what divers get. They were getting the bends on the quarter of a mile ride high a, a trip to the 107th floor. So Joe tried to slow the elevator down to see if he could do that. <laughs> it wouldn't work. And eventually, Blue Trout did not get served ever at Windows on the World. And for me, that was a story. When I heard that, when I was starting to report on my book, I realized if this restaurant has a story like that, there must be so many more. And I really, it really gave me the life to continue my, my research. So that's the story of the fish. But I want to tell you about a napkin. Um, in 1993, there was a waiter named Albert Lee, or he's better known as Mr. Lee. He had immigrated from Hong Kong, and he was working the lunchtime crowd in February of 1993. And he had a table of 10 people. Things were going well. But then there was an immense explosion. He almost jumped out of his uniform. And he thought that the dishwasher in the kitchen had exploded because it's this giant machine that makes a ton of noise. But that wasn't what was happening. And as we know now, unbeknownst to them, there was a truck bomb that had been placed um, in the garage. And it had blown up, killing six people, including a Windows employee. And all those cars were on fire with all their tires. And it was creating an immense amount of smoke that was going straight up the building and onto the 107th floor. So there was tons of smoke pluming out. And the Windows staff adhered to their fire drill training and said, OK, everyone, let's go to the stairwell and go down. 
instead of going to the roof or staying put. And one steward had a great idea. He said, let's get pitchers of water and put napkins in them so that people can have some relief. They can cover their mouths because they're all this smoke that was going up the stairwell. Um, but Mr. Lee did not have one. Uh, but one of his colleagues luckily did, and his colleague took his napkin and ripped it in half. And, uh, and so he had one. And it took people as many as two hours to get down the stairs. There was so much smoke. The lights had gone out. There was congestion. There was panic. And as Mr. Lee was going down the stairs, he would come upon someone who was having some sort of distress, and that person was having a hard time breathing. And when that happened, uh, Mr. Lee took his napkin and he ripped it in half. And he did that again and again, until Mr. Lee arrived at the ground floor with a, a napkin that was the size of a postage stamp. And to me, that was just, that's just so symbolic and so indicative of, of his experience and the connection to the restaurant it's a story that I always want to remember. I've got one more story for you. It's about a birthday card. This is Anna Saria. In 2018, she wanted to visit her husband, Luis, who had died on 9-11. He had died 17 years earlier, and so in 2018, she wanted to visit him on his birthday, which is in June. Normally, she goes during the, the anniversary uh, in September. But that year, she wanted to visit him on his birthday. So she took a card, and she wrote, to the love of my life, you surprise, you didn't know I was coming. And um, took a flower and the card, and she headed into Manhattan from Queens. Now, Anna and Luis had known each other in their native Ecuador um, since she was a child. Their families used to make fried rice together and sell them on the streets, sell it on the streets. And um, they had married and immigrated to the United States and had a son, and Luis was an undocumented worker. Um, he got a job as a stock boy at Windows on the World. It was a dream job, and he loved it, and he worked so hard, and he, wor he worked his way up to being a manager, and he took some time off in, uh, in the August of 2001, and um, his first day back was on September 11th, which is when the, the day he died. So Anna wanted to visit him. Uh, she took the train, got to uh, the memorial, and she took uh, the card on his name, um, etched in bronze there on the memorial, and she um, put it there with the flower, and she stood back, and she observed. And she watched people go up to the card, and she watched them put their hands on their hearts. Some people cried, and she was just very moved, and she just felt very good, and she said to, in her mind, See, my love, all these people came for your birthday. Eventually, she wanted to go, and so she thought, oh, it would be so nice if I could sing happy birthday to him. And so she wanted to get up close to the card. But um, there were too many people. Eventually, there were four young women with long hair who stood by the card, and they, um, they started singing happy birthday. And so she said, OK, this is my opportunity. So she went up to them, and she said, thank you so much for doing this. And they said, what's your connection to, to this memorial? And she said, this is my husband. And um, she said, they said to her, well, would you like to sing with us? And she said, yes, I would love to. And so they sang, happy birthday, and they cried together. And it's a moment that Anna will always remember. Um, now, when I go through the memorial, I'm a native New Yorker, and when I go through it and I see the tourists that are there, I would rather they be there than not, but there's a strange feeling there. It feels like, almost like Times Square. There is some reverence, um, there's aware, awareness that there, it's a sacred space, but I really want these people to be connected to the stories, to the lives that were lost on 9-11, and I think um, by relaying these stories, that's the best way, rather than a slogan. Um, I've got one more picture for you. These are waiters, former waiters from Windows on the World, and um, they still get together. Oh, in fact, that's Mr. Lee in, this, in the striped sweater there. Um, uh, so they get together still. They don't forget, but the way they don't forget is by telling stories, funny ones, crazy ones, sad ones like the ones I've told you today.
Thank you.